going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Apologize, we're running a few minutes late, but we're going to start with our pledge. And if Commissioner Davis will do our invocation, please. Let me mute this thing before it goes off. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Lord, we come to you tonight thanking you for all the many blessings you have given us. We ask, dear Lord, that you watch over this commission, help them make the right decisions that will further our community and further your cause here on earth. We ask that you be with us, God lead and direct us, and always say and do. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good evening, everybody. Welcome. And we will get started with our agenda items. And that first item is the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion Sorry, second. James. Any further discussion? Aye. Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is the bills. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. There's no old business, so we'll skip right on to new business. And the first item is approve the police manual revisions and additions. Y'all should have a package that's talked about some uh, policy changes in our policy and procedure. Uh, a lot of them is just a word or two different. Uh, these come with recommendations from KLC. By changing these, it will help increase uh, better our rate for the So that's the reason why we do them. And there was a few of them that needed to be updated. So we just need to okay to do that. Okay. Move to approve the police manual revisions. A second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is approve the 2020 motor vehicle tax rate, which was in your packet and that was sent down to us. We don't really do anything but approve it. <laughs> the state sets it. it. Yeah, we don't have anything to do with that one, right? No. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is approve the first reading of the Code of Ordinances. This is something the mayor has to do at the beginning of each fiscal year. We've already approved all the ordinances throughout the year, but now we've got to go back and approve the book as she has put it together with all the new ordinances in it. So this is one all Did I explain that correctly? As much as it makes no sense? It's for the, the ordinance for the entire year. Yeah. And, uh, all those we'll put a band right yeah. I'll move to adopt the ordinance. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is to approve the first reading of a sewer ordinance on the tapping charges. And what we've run into, and Larry's not here, he had to leave for a few minutes, but he should be right back. But what we have, are running into, there is right now the $250 in town and $350 out of town tap on fee to tap onto the sewer line. But we're running into a problem is if someone has either a new tap or a repair and they go in, uh, we've got some issues right now we're having to deal with where they cut blacktop to cross it and fills it in with gravel and then when you have rains or gravel washes gets in the storm drain stops the storm drain up so what he's wanting to do or what we are proposing to do is change the ordinance to specify that uh, in addition to the 250 fee uh, the landowner would be responsible property owner would be responsible for the cost of installation and all of the other upgrades that have to be done like Putting asphalt back, and a lot of times we do concrete instead of blacktop. Right. Just that, it's, so it, would they be responsible for it? Because it has to settle. You can't just you cut a line. You can't just put it in right in the Right. Would they re be responsible for it for the say, twelve months that it would be there, Larry? On the your, on cutting on the it to cut the street for the sewer or something, or tapping on a water line. Are they going to be responsible for it for twelve months while it sits there and settles before you put the asphalt down? No, we, we wouldn't do anything until it settles. No, I meant though, but would the customer be more rock to go back in and all that kind of stuff? That no, we would be wrong. We just take care of the rock. They would just pay for the concrete and the repair when it's done. Oh, okay. It starts to get the point where it's about what anywhere from thousand, fifteen hundred dollars, eighteen hundred dollars every time that happens. Yeah. And we 
we've well, had time and power too. You have to go up there and fill it in once or twice while it's settling. Mm -hmm. And I right off the top of my head know two right now that's causing some issues that yeah. we're they gonna have the to be out. Which I'm a little tickled they did go in there and refill it. You know, from two hundred fifty dollars right now, that supplies a saddle. The plumber taps it, and we supply the rock to put back in it. <coughs> so, you know, it's pretty much a break even right there. Time you consider mm -hmm. all that. And the hour man power hours, yeah. There's, it's nothing. We're, we're not trying to make money right, we're off just this. Trying we're to just trying to cover our costs, but there's a lot of additional costs that are coming up. And Sandy, did you make that motion? I started to. Sorry. But I would, no, you're fine. You're fine. I will make the motion that we approve the first reading of the sewer ordinance tapping charge. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, seeing five with aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, same. Okay. Next, we'll start with Mike Allen. Any? You see, I gave everybody a, a letter of resignation from one of our officers, Officer York. Uh, he is no longer with us. He has uh, moved on to the Sheriff's Department. Actually started today. Uh, Officer York, three plus years in the 80s, he did a good job. Nothing bad to say about him at all. He left on good standing. Uh, so I'd like to ask if you accept his letter of resignation. Uh, and also uh, ask for permission to start advertising for a uh, certified officer. Thank you, Motion. We accept this letter of resignation and we begin to advertise for a certified officer. That's, we need to do that two separate motions. Two separate. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll start with this one. Resignation. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify with aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same. Motion passes. To make a motion that we start advertising for a certified officer. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Are you just going to advertise for certified only, Mike? Uh, yeah. At first? Yeah. Okay. okay. Those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes. Mike, have anything else? No, everything else is good. Everybody behaving? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, there you sit. David, do you have anything to say? How's everything going in your first good. month and a week? It's going good. Busy. It's going good. Okay. Mr. Pratchett, do you have anything? I don't have anything. Mr. McKee? Uh, we've got a water bill issue. Uh, Larry can probably explain it better than I can. We got a bill in June uh, for $764.35. And if I characterize this the wrong way, please correct me. This was supposed to be for the device they use to read the meters. It's a computerized device. Uh, it's got a transponder on it, and they were getting an error message, I guess. And it was looking like it was no use at all. So we were paying the minimum amount. Then they read the meter, and the meter came up and said it was 140,000 and 100 gallons over 36 months. Uh, and that's what the bill was based on. It was discounted, but uh, I got notified to come in and we, we met several times with him. I had done some research, and the last time we met, uh, the use of this water is on Magnolia Street. There's no house. There is a building there, it's a garage, it does have water, uh, but the use was exorbitant. It was 3,892 gallons per month, and no one lives there, no one stays there. Uh, we're rarely over there. My dad goes over there once in a while, sits on the front porch, and may use the restroom every once in a while, but when you compare it to the house that he lives in, which is right behind uh, this facility on Kentucky Street, the use at the non-inhabited place is 5.4 times higher than the use at the house, where we use, where we use the washer. The, is uh, somebody tapped into your line? Not that I know of. We got two meters out there, Kevin. There's two, or two. I know where you're talking about. No, I know where the building's at and yeah, everything. There's two, it says two pieces of property that have been joined together, and there's two right there beside the driveway. So when we met, I told him, I said, this does not look right. I think there's an error here somewhere because the water usage is just, it can't be correct. Now, I've got the prints. I'd be happy to get, I brought copies for everybody. Would you like to see it? Larry, is there a way we can check to see if there's water being taken out there that, and where it would be going? Because that's a lot of water. 
You know, the only thing we're responsible for is, is to the meter. Anything beyond that, we wouldn't have any any knowledge. Nope. There's no uh, there's no water hydrants or anything that somebody could. We have an out. outdoor faucet that's got about a three foot hose, so we can fill up a water bucket. Now we planted a small garden over there. I did for my dad, but I mean I use like three five gallon buckets of water. No soft that. places in the yard or anything. Nope. No no, no, leaks. no water running use, down the ditch or. We haven't used sprinkler systems uh, in the winter time. He's rarely there. I might go over there every once in a while to check it, but there's just virtually no water usage. The house he lives in, where he's there seven days a week, he's using the restroom, he's using the dishwasher, he's using the washer. We're averaging 720 gallons a month of actual usage. And the vacant place is 3,892 gallons. Now, my house in Hartford, where I live in Hartford, we're averaging 3,100 gallons. My wife does laundry all the time, so something, and this is, Larry was very nice, I he was very professional, very nice. I, we laid this out, we discussed it, and I said, what's the solution? Where do we go from here? And he said, I really don't know. And I said, did I need to come before the city commission? He said, yeah, that's probably. We definitely need to know where the water's going. That's my main concern, yeah, we, is where's can, the water going? We can send the meter off to have it tested. Uh, in my experience, we have never had a meter come back that has overread. But did you look at these? Are running? No. I mean, it's not running. No. And yet, it still showed it had how many gallons? Three thousand some gallons a month. Three thousand eight hundred ninety-two gallons a month. Well. Would you like to see the copies? I mean, I got these copies from was it Mary? Mary. Mary printed yeah. these and sent these to me. Well, I've got the one on the house. The one on the house. Well, this should, should, be, well, this should is, be turning while it's. Well, if you look at the meter, if it's running, if there's a constantly turning, if there's a. Now this is, if you'll notice that's 452 Kentucky, this is the Magnolia address, this is, this one is the one in question. Three years? Yeah. And it started three years ago? Well, we got the bill in June, and it was a 36 month bill, yes. correct, based, and it was 140 gallons, 140,100 gallons. What they, did it's been showing zero. Yeah. So. Transponder, how long? The transponder will send out a signal, and for 36 months it was sending out a zero. Usage. Here's a worksheet I, I worked up in preparation for this. Give my hand right away, please. No. And then the second, the secondary way of reading it, different periods of time at a zero usage for so long, we go back and hand read it, and the dial and the register actually has the numbers. When you read the numbers, that's when it comes up with this difference of reading. The transponder versus the main reading. What if we shut the water off at the meter for a few days and see what happened? Could we do that? I don't know what that's going to tell you. How long? Well, it shouldn't run any water through it. I know it won't let shut yeah. off. Well, then you know somebody's getting the water. It's got to be going somewhere. We need to. That's my big thing. Where's all this water going? Well, question: How long is the transponder two faulty? Maybe. Are there two, are there two uh, meters on the same line? There are two. Covers. I don't know if it's got two Five meters on it. Larry, did this, does it have two meters? No, there's one meter for that resident. There's one, and the other hole does not have a meter. Is that correct? Uh, I think it's correct. Okay, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. and we own the place across the street on the other side of the road. Uh, there's a little house there, but we've got the electric and the water turned off, and that's not in question. This is this is just a vacant lot with a garage. We cleaned up an old house, got it hauled off, and built a nice garage this there. This is a question that we should better respond. So something is wrong. I, I, I think the evidence, this, this handwritten note, if you look, here's the actual readings per month on 452 Kentucky. This is where this is where my dad is living. This is the actual water usage, okay? The Magnolia, top of this worksheet here, it was 36 months, 140,100 gallons, which is 3,892 gallons a month, and nobody's there. Now, I'm not saying we never use water there. We do use a little bit of water there, but not that. There's no yeah. way this can be accurate. And if you don't see anything running, I can't imagine where the water's going. There are no leaks, Kevin. I walked that ground numerous times. Larry's checked it, too. I think we talked about that. He said he couldn't find any leaks. I asked if there's any way somebody could have tapped into our line that we didn't know about. If we shut the water off for a few days just for to test but, it, would you care about that? That won't show anything, because if anybody's tapped into it, it'll be after the meter. That's what I'm saying, but whoever's tapped into it's not going to get any water for a well, few days. Well, that's true. They won't have water, but they're not going to come tell you they don't have water. <laughs> they might after a few days. <laughs> I, I bet they don't. don't. <laughs> I don't have anybody's knowledge, but it's beyond me. I just know that 
These numbers for the magnolia agates cannot be correct. Yeah. Even if that were the case, this is a lot of usage. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm yeah. thinking. It's way more than what I use at home in Parker. Maybe in the neighborhood. Some of, you, some of the folks up here know my wife. Yeah. She's doing laundry all the time. My God. It, they, it cannot be accurate. I'm not saying, Larry, I'm not pointing finger. Larry, right. Larry, <coughs> total gentleman, total professional. I'm saying this is not accurate. I don't know why. I don't know why it's not accurate. I don't know what the solution is. I don't know how to catch it. But I don't think we ought to be responsible for the bill. And I, I would like to know where it's going. I mean, if, that, if it's running that much water, I would like to know where it's going. I'm sorry. So if you like to know where it's going, then turn the meter off. Put your cell camera up and visualize and see it. <laughs> yeah, and and you know if you got a Because I mean, if nothing else, I mean, if you run a new line, which I hate to make I hate anybody do that, but that would guarantee that the only person on that line is going to be you. But that's having to run a new water line, and that's that's ridiculous to have to run a new water line if there's nothing wrong with the line, if it's just something else. I don't I mean, know if it's an equipment defect or not. I, I don't know. Why was it reading zero all that time and it? The transponder is sending out the zero read. The secondary read that you can verify is the, the manual read on the register. Okay, but why was it sending out zero all the time? I cannot answer that. I answer well, we definitely need to change the transponder, if nothing else. Well, I mean, uh, I mean we, we can send the meter off and have it tested. That, that's not a problem. But, it, you know, we need to know what direction we go if it tests good or what direction we go if it tests bad. Uh, how long was it? If I, if I understand, there was a minimum bill. And then all of a sudden, after how many months there is? 36. The, tra the transponder kept showing a, a zero read. But the question is, if, if, it, if it is something that happened that's the fault of the city, it's difficult to pass 36 yeah. months I agree. Mm -hmm. to a I customer. Agree. That's why the secondary read is there. You can verify it. But again, Shouldn't have waited it's, not, yeah, it's not his fault that we, had, we waited 36 months to mm -hmm. check the secondary read. That's my problem with it. Why 36 months, Larry? Well, that, that and again, I'm not faulting you either. Well, that, that possibly been changed on our part because anytime a zero read pops up and rises now, we check every month. So, you know, we, we've corrected that part on our side. Okay. That, we were paying the minimum fee. Right. Yeah. I mean, I get that. I, I, it's, it's 2, that takes 2, off of what you did. minimum? So they were paying the 2,000 gallons every right. month. It's basically the 1,892 a gallon. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think this is pretty simple. I don't, have legal. I don't think you can pass it on I, to the customer. But yeah, I can't, I can't mm -hmm. justify If it's our fault, I cannot pass it on to the customer for no reason. But the problem is, I still... Maybe that doesn't water solve water the problem. Water. The problem's still there. Where's the water going? If he's actually running that much water through it, where's it going? Because I know Bill McKee, he could, he could sit out there all day long. He doesn't even drink water. He might drink a beer, but he doesn't drink water. <laughs> or two. Or two. <laughs> Root or unrooted. But anyway. This uh, was for June. So this was red June. That it was still, the last time it was zero was when? Here, Paul. Here's the original. Uh, or not, not the original bill. This is the bill that we got yeah. that had the increase. And when I talked to Larry, he said it was 36 months. Yeah. I just wanted the date. This is the May to June. Red. And here's the usage. The Mary said to add two zeros, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's 140,100. So, so this would have been read on 614. 614 is when we have the biggest. Okay. So, so we've back on what was what did it read on 714? 715 was zero. That's because the transfer. But did you go to a manual read on then? This is a whole new yeah, we put in a new transfer. Yeah, oh. Okay. And it's still reading zero? Well he I didn't use any water that month. He didn't, but no, he didn't do anything different. There's going to be some water go through there, but it's it's going to be a very minimal amount as far as usage in that place. Because we do we do have a bathroom in there, and we've got mm -hmm. that little faucet. When you went and checked the water meter, did you go check that manually on July 14th? This is the following right. month. And it, zero. It's, it's, it's zero. 70,100 gallons. It's not, it's not a register of reading, and we read 100 gallons. So until it reaches just 100 gallon mark. So he used less than 100 gallons in that month? In that month. But did you do a, a manual read in July? No, manual and the meter read. What was the manual? Do you remember? Or was I it? Don't. Did they run it on a work slip? I'm sure it, it were on my reading stuff. I'm sure. But, I mean, it would have been the same really changed in the system, so it should have been the zero. So the manual should have matched yes. then what?
Well, after all the discussion, what I'm going to ask you <laughs> folks to do is waive the charges or cancel the charges. Uh, we'll be happy to pay what we owe, but sure. I, I don't think that's what we owe. I don't think that's an accurate reading of what we what we use over there. Now, I don't know. It's like Larry and I talk. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know how to check this. So. But I'm asking you to cancel or waive the charges. Larry, if it came up zero on this last month, why was it using so much before? I mean, I'm not trying to point fingers at anybody. All I'm just thing, curious only why. The only thing that I can't answer that, the only thing we're responsible for is to the meter. Anything beyond, we have no control. So we, we can send the meter off, we can have it tested for verification on our behalf, or, or we can just, you know, chop it up. But even if you say there was a, a faucet out there for the hole, even if that was left on, how long would that have to run to get? It would have to be Longer that long. A, month. a toilet, a toilet would run eight thousand gallon pretty easy in a month. You know, if it was leaking, uh, really, and, and you wouldn't see no water pop up in the yard. Just you know, yeah, that's going to be the We haven't had any leaks, uh, and we haven't done. We we don't run sprinklers or anything like that. All. Well, I know Bill is pretty very particular about his stuff, and that's the reason I say it just doesn't sound like him at all. Mm -hmm. So really, we'd have no idea where the water went. We don't know if it was the, the transponder that's messed up or if there is a leak. Or well, We know the transponder was messed up because it's been sent out of false reading. We don't know. If we it shouldn't have been sending out a zero reading if it was using that kind of... So, But the last month we checked it, it, did show, it showed zero again. My suspicion is over the 36 months, you had a toilet stick wide open for a couple months in a row. There was no indication of a leak in the ground. It all went back into the sewer. That's, that's my best guess. Can't prove it. Do I think do I think the meter's faulty? Transponder, yes. Mechanical, no. It's hard for it's hard. No offense, it's hard for a water meter to mess up. I'm sorry. Well, that, it they really tend, is. They tend to be like us. We, we slow down. Yeah, and and they're pretty simple too. Yeah. I, I would. I like said. I'd like to check it one more time. If in August we check it, this month we check it. And it comes back a zero reading again. I have no problem with waiving the fee. I don't because there's something wrong somewhere. It may be a one-time thing where a water pipe busted or something that you would have noticed that. Yeah, they would, they'd had fixed it. And you know, and I think he'd notice if his toilet was oh, we, we running. We have any problem like that? Yeah. We, we don't. We got a half bath, I guess you call it. Yeah. So he just the just came over the sink. Yeah. We, I've I mean, been there. The sink the is not leaking. The commode's not leaking. We haven't it's watered anything. Leaking. We. There's no leak outside. There's no wet spot outside. So that's what I say. It's just not making sense. Huh? So there's really no way even to tell what month or when it happened or anything, is there? Yeah. Hmm. That's a lot of water you got for a full you know family that. living there. Yeah. I mean, that would be a full family of four or five, probably, to get that much average usage. It, it's just not possible. I'm in agreement. I'd like yeah, to wait sure. another month and then get, would you mind doing that just to, for us? That's fine. To, just to see, because if it shows up again zero, then there's something really strange going on. That's fine. Larry, do you think that would be okay if we just tabled it until next month and then yeah, yeah. deal with it? We've been dealing with this for two or three months. Yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not trying to put you off. I just no, want no, to no, check no, it no. one more time. Larry has been more than professional dealing with this. And I've asked him some pretty straight questions. And he just, he's honest. He said, I don't know the answer. Yeah. He, he's, every month he's come in, he said, do I need to pay anything? And I said, no, let's, let's get it resolved before we do anything. Yeah. So, yeah. And we may ought to have that meter check because it may be the one in a million. It could be. But More I just don't think so. Have you ever heard of a neighbor running the hose over to their house? Oh yeah, that, that, and I know his, I know your dad's neighbors. <laughs> Not to say they would do it. <laughs> That's what I was getting at a while ago, but it's, it's still going to take a lot of water running a long time. Night. We haven't caught them. I put it that way. I've heard of running the cable line to the neighbor next yeah, door. I've heard that too. Extension cord. Yeah, we've heard a lot of that. Okay, so is everyone good with that? Thank you, Cliff. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right. Thank you all, sir. Can I stand up? Oh, absolutely. Anything you want. My name is Denny Hughes. I actually live in Mexico Beach, Florida, but we have a place here in a, a, on Rochester Road, and we come up here and spend a week or two. And since a hurricane, we're spending two months up here. <laughs> uh, me and Mike play pickleball. 
I play down in Florida, and you know, it's taken off in Owensboro big time. There's probably seven, eight different places they're playing there. I'm guessing there's probably two to three hundred people playing. So I told Larry this morning, uh, the good part or the bad part, most of them old people like me. Uh, now, we are getting a lot of young people starting to play, but it's, or people like Mike, that age, really. Uh, I asked Larry about, and Mary mm -hmm. asked him about the tennis courts up on Tour Street and went and looked at them. And they're, they're in rough shape, but to get it started in this area, they could be fixed fairly easy. The two issues I seen up there was we can coat them. We can do that ourselves just to put a sealant on a court. And we'd probably only set up one court and maybe two to get started. And as I told Larry, they need to be washed off and there's no water up there. And Larry thought that a fire truck might have a leak up there and clean them off bars or something. Uh, and then we'd seal them. Uh, it needs to use some Roundup up there to kill the weeds. We'll take care of that. Uh, and then we'd have to paint lines for the pickleball court. Uh, you know, it can be hand painted. We use chalk for two or three years down in Mexico Beach. It's a lot of work every time. Especially have a lot of rain washes it off. And I, I just wanted to see if we could get permission to use them courts. Uh, How big a space do you need? You have the courts are 20 foot wide and 44 foot long. You could easily put four, if not eight, on that. Up. We we put four down home on a regular <coughs> size tennis court, and you got two courts up there. Well, I know we had some pickleball players come over to the wellness center and play on the racquetball court. I just wondered if you that can't. One. Is it too small? Yeah, it's too, too small. small. You need because uh, you got to run out. twenty by forty, right? The tempo, uh, yeah, it's, it's 20, <laughs> 20 by forty, and yeah. we need that. Run you need about road. five foot on each side of that 20 foot, and you need seven to eight feet minimum on each end because people like Mike kind of run over the line sometimes. Yeah. I don't keep blaming me, but I sit at the house and do that. Now, I go to Orangeboro four days a week and play. Denny goes two or three days a week, so it's big over there. And one of our biggest obstacles will be getting out the awareness that people that play love it, but when you say pickleball, most of them look at you like, what are you talking about? But we have. I was thinking. And, and, and it's big <laughs> well, it's it's actually is big. It's, it's actually Mike has talked to me about the fastest that. growing sport in the United States the last four years. The villages down in Florida has a 178 courts. When we started, we took a basketball court and set up three. We have seven now, and just Duke Energy came in and built. They actually built the courts for eight, but they measured wrong, and we can only get four on. So we have 11 courts right there in town to play on. Uh, it's it's a good activity. There's really the people's what's the best part. You get to meet a lot of people, and they're always good people, except for Mike. <laughs> okay. And my question on that is, with the grant that we had with the tennis courts, would we be allowed to let it play that? My answer would be we could play on it until they came and told us no. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't think anybody's going to check. No one's, that's what I'm saying. They, no one's been playing tennis on them. No, nobody plays anything. No. And I hate to see them sit there empty. So it could be utilized. The worst they can do is slap us on the hands later. Mm -hmm. the, the second thing, and I didn't think of this for later, that always would come in handy is if we had a uh, trash can up there. Uh, you know, we, we all have to have water to drink. If you've got a trash can there that the city would pick up and throw away once a month or whatever. It was not the trash can, the trash can. <laughs> it would make, keep the park clean. Mm -hmm. And we have nets and paddles that we will supply when it starts. Uh, if it doesn't take off, we don't need to do much more about it. But let's say it did take off. If you could leave nets up all the time, if that would be feasible, I don't know if it would or not, whether it be vandalism or what. But we'll have our nets, we'll have to set them up, take them down when we play. But if we ever got more people want to play, if they're on leisure, uh, we couldn't leave them up with like portable nets, you know. If you had, and the posts are 27 foot apart. Uh, I, I measured a while ago, the center lines, if you painted lines, if somebody didn't want to play tennis, the center lines that we have are two foot. Uh, we go two foot inside the tennis lines, different colors. So you could, if you really wanted to, you utilize the tennis court for dual purpose, if it ever got to that. But, uh, like one of our biggest aspects will be how do we tell the community, get anybody interested, and then if that happens, then it's a, 
different ball game then, but that's just the way you see things. I went to Purdue Farms, talked to them. Uh, there's a couple of them getting ready to retire that they want to start playing or learn the game. I talked to Dan Jackson, the attorney mm -hmm. over. He's played before. He said he'd be interested. Scott Lewis. I think he lives right down yeah. here. People uh, yeah, people breathe. Maybe when he gets off his cane. <laughs> and it, it we you. have down there, and up here too, uh, we have an 85 year old man that plays, and we have an, a woman that's a little older, but nobody will ask her age. <laughs> and so I, I didn't ask her her age. She was born in 1932, she told me. And so you can do the math there, and she'll kick your butt. Now, it's amazing. But anyway, I have no problem with well, no it at all. Good to, me. good to make that a motion? I wouldn't think I so. I was going to say we might not ought to. I don't know why we would need to. It's just yeah. it's yeah. a facility I mean, we use. Let them go. Uh, no, it's not in an official minutes. Larry, can you get a yeah. trash can up there one day when they start playing? And what, one more question. Do they, they don't play the soccer up there anymore. They don't do the soccer up there anymore. The, Sometimes they show up. Sale? Yeah. Well, but the that's portable stuff, it's... Yeah. That's where we had trouble. Uh, we had some we people. We need to get a fire truck to hold it off playing for before yeah. we just do everything. We need to go, we need weeds out of it. Fire chief's already, already gave a thumbs up. So. He already put a bit of thumbs up, so it'll right. get washed off. So Thank you, thank you sir. Thank no you problem. Thank you. Thank you, all. Okay, that was an easy one. That was easy. I like those. Jody? Don't anybody else be easy? Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is that pickleball? <laughs> no. My name's Randy Hurd. I'm representing the uh, Green Meadows community yeah. subdivision. Oh. We're here about the water issues. I think he was saving you guys till last because he thought you might. Okay. Uh, no, I was going down the line. I don't know who's who. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Beth said she wanted to be the spokesperson, and I hadn't got to her yet. So. <laughs> um, my name's Eddie Embry, uh, and I'll everybody in here, but we live in, there's several of us here from Green Metal Subdivision, and I've lived there for about three years, three four years now, and uh, we have a major flooding problem down there. Um, my house is up towards 62, 43 Green Meadows, and I have a lake that literally surrounds my house, and... Um, and it goes down by Larry Arnold's all the way across um, to the other part of the subdivision, all the way down by McGuffin's and uh, down by Bess. And it, it just becomes a huge lake. And it happens whenever we get you know, heavy rains. It's not a light rain, but when we get heavy rains, all that water coming from 62, the ditches can't handle it. And I think, <clears throat> this is my personal opinion and looking at things, down by Bess, house, the ditch is just, it's got junk in it, for lack of a better term. I mean, it's just, everything's grown up, and water can't get out fast enough, and so therefore it starts backing up, and then it becomes a lake. Um, so what we're asking is for the city to come and look at the ditch and possibly clean out that ditch so the water can get out of the subdivision and see if that pretty much takes care of it. Um, it's backing up all the way up almost to 62, and that's that's a pretty good size subdivision. Who's the last house as it goes out? Who's the last house? <laughs> it, is, it is on city property. Yeah. Uh, it's on the sewer plant yeah. property mm -hmm. where that did too. Yeah. And she's got some telephone, uh, sorry, Kennedy poles. They're actually kind of falling in that ditch, and she's already talked to Kennedy. Okay. They're not falling over, but they. The yard is eroding away, Back so to they it. are now in the ditch where they used to be in the yard on land. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. they're now in. The so ditch. we're asking for some help to try to get that water out of that out of the subdivision. We've got several pictures. Yes, yeah, so and if y'all want to see pictures, we got. I've got a video of the last rain, heart rain, on my phone. Uh, I have no problem at all cleaning out the ditch, and from the way it sounds, it needs it. Uh, what about the long? Do you want ditches along the streets cleaned out as well, or I mean, yeah, it's going to cause the way your yard, yard will look will look different when we clean the ditches out on right. in your yard. If needed, yeah, that's not going to help. Well, I'm saying no, if we go all the way not. down, but you're we start. Coming in, you're coming in. On, this runs along the side of my property and goes to bed. It comes in, hits a ninety. Yep. And then it hits, then it turns and goes to the water line. 
But what it actually needs is another tile in there for a straight shot, more of a straight shot. So that water can get away. I mean, the water can't get away. That's the problem. That's well, the water can't get away. And where the biggest problem's at, because I knew this was coming, so I did a little research. Where your biggest problem is at, and there's nothing that any of us can do about it, is the stretch of the creek or the ditch, whatever, that goes from where it leaves the subdivision across the Barnard Farm to the next big right. creek. Mm -hmm. You have 1,500 foot and less than one, well, actually one third of 1% fall. Water won't drain on a third of 1%. Now, you add that on top of the fact that empties into that creek, which from there makes a 90 to the north and empties into Muddy Creek. And you add on the fact with, and with, and of course, having been in the, the drainage business and arguing and not a big fan of the Kentucky Division of Water, you have people like Kentucky Division of Water who, you know, we can't clean out anything anymore because you will disturb some bat or a beaver and, or whatever. So in the last 20 years, you've had Muddy Creek. Well, Rough River's not been cleaned out. Muddy Creek's not been cleaned out. The ditches running there hadn't been cleaned out. And the one from across the Barner Farm, they just haven't been cleaned out. So they're doing the same things happening to them as what's happened to the one across the lot there by Bess. Now, granted, that's ours. We can clean it. Well, we may get in trouble for it because it is a blue line stream. But again, I'm one of these. We'll, we'll worry about the forgiveness later instead of the permission on something like that. Please don't quote me on that one. Uh, I know. We'll clean, but we'll clean. We can get that cleaned out. There used to be a pond back there. Oh, on Barnard? Water went in too, and they filled that in. Uh. And they you know, whoever's farming it now, build all that in. I think that was just a lot of it. They pulled some, uh, they brought a track hole in there and they pulled the bushes out of the ditch a couple years ago. And then I think they filled the ponds in when they done that. But personally, I think if you clean that out, they cut the street, put another towel in, as big as that, and put water to go on, which is what that sounds to me. Well, again, the problem is, no, I know, the problem is it's just, it, it's, it's so flat. The, you, generally, you want a minimum, a bare minimum, and that's not even a good minimum, of 2% fall to get water away from anything. And like I say, that fall across that farm right there is about one-third of 1%. It's got to help to clean up the ditch up. Oh, absolutely. And I, I'm, I'm not, no, we'll be happy to clean the ditch out because it, it needs it. It needs it, and we need, it needs it, if nothing else, to protect where it's washing out. In the, uh, to Bass Yard and around those power poles. Cause I that's, wonder if there's any way that rock, we did a little bit, remember a little bit of rock on one side, on my side of it several years ago, probably within the last five, but it's not, that rock is now falling into holes. That I've, I've actually pulled some of that rock up to kind of try and fill some holes up. Mm, that big, big chunk yeah. of rock, yeah. <laughs> have you got videos of you lifting that out? I know, I know, but I have done it. But I've filled some holes, but they just keep sinking down, down there. there. And the yards really is becoming mm -hmm. and less and less there. And it just it needs something. I quit spraying weeds because I thought, okay, it needs some roots or something there. Well, and you're right. That <laughs> so, I, I don't know. So we got this, another problem, too. This is headwater here. Right? Where it comes out right in the middle of the subdivision over 40 Golden. I live 40 Golden right lane. Right there, on the left side of my property, that cover there, it always comes over the road. I've got a video of the last hard rain, and it is up in Tony's. Oh, yeah, way. I've seen that. Yeah, and uh, you can't just, well, we get from the back. But that, the, the culvert across the street right there can't be any lower than the bottom of the ditch across the road. That's where we run into problems and everything. It, it's so flat through there. But as it comes down to us, it backs up the fire so it can't get through there. Yeah. But a, it goes a, through there so fast it can't get out down there. But a bigger culvert there can't be done because of the ditch across the road without making it deeper. And we can't make it deeper because it's only two foot higher than what it is down where it goes under the bluegrass. Yeah, bluegrass. I've heard all about the water at Tony's. <laughs> <laughs> And that's why I knew some of this, and that's why I went ahead and I've been spending some time looking at some of these maps and stuff, trying to figure out anything that could be done. And, and like I say, the ditch, we will get that cleaned out and taken care of and work on that. And, and, ho and hopefully that will alleviate a little bit. But I know the one rain that she showed me some stuff on, when it got up, I, maybe when you got in your garage, but you say it comes from behind you? Yeah, no, it's got in my garage. Oh. And, and I know it's got into your system goes under their house. Yeah, but what's coming down through there, that one rain, 
there is nothing that's going to be done that night. Was it your pool? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Ditch, I knew there was a pool, and you yeah. Beth had a pool all of a sudden. Down. This is in front of my house yeah. before we go around the line. There's Tony's garage. Yeah. That's what's going on the road for us. See that cover? There's a hump over that cover right there. Well, there's just not a lot of dry. There's just not a dry. That's just no. I mean, we clean ditches out, but I don't know that it'll make a lot of water go anywhere faster. Mm -hmm. Hit the start. Along the street. Along the street, yes. But it'd be any way to stop the water coming from across 62 if we get that too. On the other side of the highway, that comes over in two places. Or have you heard any of that? I haven't looked over there. I was looking at downstream, uh, trying to get it out. Uh, <laughs> that won't be us, will it? I mean, getting it out will well, be but that'd be state. Well, and that's, again, that's getting, that's not even in the city limits. That's what I say, that's state. That's his problem. That will, this, Across the road is not in the city, and it's on private property. And then you get the point that the state is the one who state put that. That's a storm, a state highway. Well, actually, it's a federal highway, but it's under state control. So they would have been the ones who would have put that and handled that storm piping across the edge. And I don't, I can't picture, and I've been back there too, but I can't picture what it, how the ground lays over there, or where it's all coming from, across okay, sixty two. Turn into the subdivision. Mm -hmm. Look to the east, and there's a ditch coming down through there. Turns right, and there's one comes yep. across the road right there, and it all comes up down to us. Yep. And that cornfield up on the east of us, that all slopes down to us. Everything from about the curve mm -hmm. on 62 comes right down through your. I don't. I don't know where you live, but I know where you live. Right okay. Between is it coming between you? Tyranny's house. Tyranny's house. Tyranny's house. Tyranny's house. Tyranny's house. Tyranny's house. Hmm? He moved into the Tyranny's house. Oh, okay. Then he, uh, he's got the lake in the backyard. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you're, so you're right there with and Kelly and then Terry and Tony and then Larry. Yeah. Every bit of water that goes between those houses is coming from all the way up to the, the curve of 62. I don't know how much more cross. Like I said, I didn't even look. But uh, even a lot of that. There's a cover coming under 62. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know what comes under from under, but I know what's coming on the 62 side, on your all side of 62. You know, they all come right between those four houses. Well, six, because you all will be up on the hill where it comes through, too. But we'll, let's get that dish cleaned out and do some work on it to at least see what that does. Uh, well, it can't hurt. We'll put it that way. So, it, you know, it can't. We can always back up the ditch a little further. And we and see and then go from there and just keep going until as far as we can go. Uh, I talked to Larry a long time ago, a couple years ago, about that water down there. I know Beth made a comment to me a while ago. The ditch has gotten wider, and that's what's going to happen when you get when your your lowest point where the where it's all draining to by on the Barnard farm. It gets to the point it can't get any lower than that, so it doesn't get deeper. That's when it starts getting wider. And, and there's no way to control water when it starts doing oh, something like that. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is there any room to put any kind of collection pond, like, on the other side of her where Mike McCown's? You're not. It, it's the kind of water comes through there. Not it's not going to make It's, no. Just, uh, <laughs> And I'm not trying to, no, I'd be willing to try anything if we could make it, but it right. just, with the kind of water that comes through there, that would just, it'd be full and before the, well, by the time the ditches are. Because right. there's a lot of water comes through there. 
I've seen the water come through there just on a normal rain. It's a lot of water, especially for behind your house and by yours. Mm-hmm. But you take it with what we had, especially that night. If we can get it out of there faster, <coughs> it'll, it'll at least help some. I mean, the problem is it stays underneath the house for a long time. Yeah, drain out when it does get like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's let's work on that one and okay. see how that goes. <laughs> that's that's a start. We'll see. Because like I, said, I understand where you're coming from, and if if that's if that helps a little bit, but it needs more help, then we might start like say start ditching on up. Because I know I'm just like everybody else. I don't want to ditch in my front yard either. But sometimes we can't help that kind of stuff. If that's what it, you know, to get it out and take care of everybody. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. I've got a couple more things. Okay. They live in 40 Golden Rod Lane. Up truck, school buses, cars. I mean, they fly down that road. The speed limit is 20 miles. There's kids playing on that road. People walk on that road all the time. People got dogs making out on the road. I mean, they, they scoot. And can we get speed limit sound on each one of them roads? There was a speed limit. Wasn't there a speed limit sign out there at one time? I don't know. I thought there was. A, I thought it was 25 I mean, that's, miles. That's not. I, I, I no, every one time it was 20 miles. Everything's 20 unless it's marked 20 otherwise. It's, it's one over on four. I think one on three metal. I don't know the signs are going. Those streets don't have one. Yeah, we can get us. <clears throat> that won't be a problem. And then another, another thing. It's a city street, right? Mm-hmm. We're in a city. Can you just park lawn more trailers and block the road all the time? Where you feel like it on any city streets over here? Not supposed to. Well, they do that there quite often. That just aggravates fire. They keep somebody's yard to be around. Lawn more trailer, you know, on those wise roads. Commercial. A commercial they lawn. The they do that on my mm-hmm. street, too. People, that, you know, gets me hard to hold. It's aggravating. Can you all? Uh, next time you see one, Give us a call, call dispatch, let them know that somebody parked in the street, we'll come over here. And we'll, we'll dispatch the patrol over there, and we'll just slow, slow down. Well, it is aggravating because a lot of times they go on somebody's yard and just get around. Unless the bulls are assed out in a. Oh, people are assed out. On the road. Somebody's assed out. It's long. That's it, and that's illegal. That is illegal to blow grass in the yard. I mean, on the, on the blacktop. Illegal. I mean, I'm hard for doesn't mention in my business, but I live on Rick Creek, Ruffalo Old Ellis Park, mm-hmm. and they used to walk out here on this line. They put a speed bump. Now, we have to contend with it, but I really contend with the speed bump as watch the traffic go fast. And when they put the speed bump there, all the traffic That's a dirty word, Mike. Don't say speed bump. Our, somewhere else. Our, insurance, I didn't know. our insurance company. All right. Don't say that. Mainly because, and that the sad part of it is, Mainly, you put a speed bump in, and if somebody hits it, if they're breaking the law and it tears our car up, we're responsible for it. <laughs> That's what I want to I was a guy pulled a shotgun on because I was putting a speed bump in front of his house one well, time, and I don't like those things. <laughs> I'm kind of like you. I, I have no problem with a speed bump. Yeah, it worked in our neighborhood until the snow plows go. That's, that's exactly what we've run into. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. I, I knew there was something to do that. I didn't know what to share. I don't mean to be no grunt, but it, it, it is a pretty oh. good product. won't break the law. The, all of the back streets, people just fly like they're yep. on the freeway. <coughs> they just, I, I, don't, I don't get it. Well, you can't take it unless you speed on the same time. And it's like the shorter the street, the faster we can make it. Put yeah. your makeup on and eat your sandwich while you're driving. You're going to do all that at the same time. He said Texas. Yeah, Texas. It's, it's sad. Sandwich, sandwich, put on, your on the street, he, you're talking about there's... But it's it's yeah. just between two streets. It, it's yeah. not a long yeah. street. Yeah, it's, it's not, not a wide street. There's a few houses out there. It's just a square. Yeah, there's, and it's just, there's, there's no street. Street. through it's traffic. Really yeah. really good yeah. I've been there. I know what you're talking about. Don't go. Come out. Yeah. We've seen Yeah. In front of our house, even with the cul-de-sac down there. They really have the floor. And there is a lot of kids in the neighborhood now. Oh, yeah. A lot of kids. Oh, you got people around this. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Okay. Is that it? Y'all good? Okay. I want to make sure you were done because I need to see. Uh huh. Okay. Right? You're with them? Okay. Jim? I'm fine. 
Sandy? Don't have anything. I um, we covered everything I had. I'm good. Hey, I'm good. Larry? I'm good. Really? Yes. Mary? Oh, wow. Mary? Oh. Mary? Wait, if he does <laughs> Actually. Oh, here we go. <laughs> we have two police cars we can put on good deals. We can wait to start that process. 99 Explorer and a 2004. Oh, nine pound bait. 99 Explorer. You made a motion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I move uh, Everett House to be able to undub that deal. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify that. Uh, oh, same. Motion passes. Are you done? I'm Mary? Okay. Well, I don't know anything. So. Holy cow! To adjourn. How'd they get some first? No, we got out here 30 minutes one time. Don't I know, but I meant where nobody had anything. <laughs> oh, yeah.